Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for LowPost.com and I'm back again with another lesson in our Fusion Essentials training series. And in this lesson, what I want to do is I want to get in and talk about presets. How we can get in and create preset looks that we can utilize in our effects workflow. Then what I want to do is I want to take a step forward. We were talking about titles in our last lesson. We're going to be talking about 3D titles in our next lesson. What I want to do is show you how you're going to be able to start to save titles out that you're going to be able to utilize in your workflow and pick the parameters that you want to show to the editor or graphic designer so that they get the looks you want but keep the titles looking exactly the way that you created them. Now as always I want to remind you that we value your feedback. So if you have any questions, you have any comments or suggestions for an upcoming lesson or course, please head on over and post them in the forums at lowpost.com slash forums. All right, and as we always do, what I want to do is I want to start out this lesson with one of our little mini lessons, and I figured I would let you, the community, decide what that mini lesson is. So I'm going to command or tab into Google Chrome, and as you can see, I'm on the landing page for our training series. I'm just going to scroll down just a little bit here, down to Fritz's comments from October the 19th. Great question here. Okay, just a beginner in Fusion, how can I move the anchor point? As for a rectangle, there isn't, so I try to understand the way of thinking. Great question, Fritz. And let's talk about that right now. I'm going to Command or Alt and Tab into DaVinci Resolve. And let's head into our Fusion tab. I'm going to call it up. You'll see that we are on the lower third that we're actually going to create in our next lesson. I'm going to talk about it a little bit in this lesson. But of course, if we'd like to switch over to the clip that we wanted to use, I happen to have the clips window open. I'm simply going to select the clip that I'd like to work with. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call up the transform node. A couple ways that we can do that. I can use shift and space bar. Or what I could do is simply use the shortcut right here on our node toolbar. So there is transform. Now, there's a couple ways that we can do this. Now, there's sort of the long and cumbersome way and then the shorter way. I'll show you both of them just so that you can figure out which way works best for you. So you'll notice that over here under the center X and Y, which will adjust our clip's position, is something called Pivot XY. Now right now Pivot XY is located in the exact same position as center X and center Y. So if I start to make an adjustment, you'll see what happens here. Okay. So what we're actually looking at is a few different on-screen widgets. You'll see that we have the rotation widget here. We have the position widget here. The X represents the pivot widget, and then we have the scale widget that's on the outside border of our clip. Okay, But you'll notice that as of right now, if I grab the widget and move it around, it only really lets me adjust the center x, y. And to be honest, you could be coming over here constantly to adjust the pivot and then adjust its angle accordingly. Now there is a faster way that we can do this. I'll just undo everything and put our widgets back to being dead center. With the widget currently selected, what I'm going to do is simply hit tab on the keyboard. You'll now see that my widget is controlling the scale of my shot. Now let's make sure I actually grab this in the right position here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And what we can do is hit tab again to then adjust rotation. And of course we can hit tab again to adjust the anchor point, or as it's called inside of Fusion, the pivot of where we want this shot to go. Okay, so that's how you can get in and work with the on-screen widgets or you can simply work with the anchor point or again like it's called inside of Fusion and Resolve, the pivot by simply grabbing it and dragging it over here in the inspector. Okay, now one more thing that I do want to show you before we move on and I'm going to head back into our edit module and I want to show you over here inside the media pool. Now I think I'm actually going to call the media pool up in its entirety. Now you'll notice that we have a few sets of bins open. We have our master bins, we have smart bins, and then I open something called power bins. Now you'll remember in the last lesson we talked about taking titles and moving them into bins for you to work with across the project that you're currently working on. However, if instead of taking those titles like you have here and dragging them into a bin that lives inside of this project, if you create a power bin and you take that title and put it into that power bin, it'll be available across all projects that you're working with 
inside of DaVinci Resolve. So keep those in mind as you're working. All right, let's move on now. Let's talk about how we're gonna create some effect look presets as well as being able to get in and to create some title macros as well. Now, what's a macro? A macro is a way that you can get in and create a text preset that you can specifically set what parameters you would like an editor or a visual effects artist to see when working with that title that you created inside of Fusion. All right, so as always, I'm just going to move our text out of the way. I'm going to right click on my clip and I want to reset that Fusion composition to set that clip back to being what I call quote unquote normal. So let's now with our clip selected head back into Fusion and I'm just going to close the clips window because I don't need to see that. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to throw a couple nodes on here to give our shot here a very specific and unique look. So let's do that. I'm going to take a transform node. We're going to put it on there. I'm just going to adjust its size. And what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to call up our safes by making sure I select the canvas, command or control and G. I never want that center parameter on there. Perfect. I'm going to adjust its size just a little bit more. I'm going to adjust its rotation a little bit here as well. Let's just give it a rotation kind of like that and let's position it in the lower left hand corner of our screen. What we're also going to do here is I'm going to add a glow. There we go. And let's give it a lot more glow size just outside like such. What I'd like to do is actually see the shot just a little bit. I don't mind if the glow stretches outside of our shot. Perfect. And let's just for kicks, just give it a little bit of a blur. I'm just going to type in blur. There we go. Add. And nothing too crazy, kind of like that. Now at this point, what I could do if I wanted to is I could add a mask for that blur so that we could see our woman in the desert a lot clearer. But remember, this is a you know, look or a preset that we're going to put across, you know, any kind of shot. It could be anything, doesn't matter. It could be this shot. It could be one of the shots of our people running through the forest, running through the city. Doesn't really matter. Now we're ready with this fantastically beautiful look that we've created to save it out as a preset. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the nodes that I'd like to include in the preset. Now you have to decide how this is going to work best for you. And what I normally recommend is selecting all the nodes except your media in node. Okay, because depending on the composite that you're working on, you might have multiple media nodes and you're going to want to bring this in and attach this specific look to one of them. So what I like to do is to save out the media out and the nodes that are attached to it as the preset. You'll see how this works in just a second, so bear with me here, okay? I'm going to select all of those nodes, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click. Now, the only problem now is that the parameter that I wanna to go to is actually outside of the viewing area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna call it up on the screen right now so that you can see it. You'll see that it's actually located all the way down at the bottom inside of our settings parameter, and I'm simply going to do a save as. Once I say save as, a window is going to pop up asking me what I would like to save this setting as. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this what it actually is, transform, and then I'm going to call it, let's just make sure we've got our notes correct here, transform underscore glow underscore blur. Okay, it's fairly self-explanatory what it is. Now I could call it LL transfer for lower left or lower left transform, not transfer. And with that preset or that setting now ready to go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply save it to the desktop. Now, I work in a dual monitor environment. So normally I have Fusion slash Resolve up in one window and my other monitor is completely empty. So what I like to do is I like to have all of my presets in a bin or a folder more specifically on my desktop open so that at any given time I can grab the look that I want to do what I'm going to do now. What we're going to do is I'm just going to head back to my edit module. I'm going to right click and we're going to reset that fusion composition just like we had just done. Okay, give it a second to snap out of it. There we go. Now again, back into fusion. I'm now simply going to delete that media out node. Okay, with that media out node deleted, what we're going to do is take that preset from the desktop and I'm going to drag it and drop it into the fusion window. As soon as I do, you'll see now there's the transform glow and blur nodes as well as media out. All I need to do is to connect to them. I'm going to call it media out on the right viewer and there's our preset look all set to go. So you can see that by picking specific nodes that I want to save out, it's only going to save those so that when I bring things back in, I can reconnect new looks 
very quickly and very easily. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to call up the clips window. Let's come to this shot right here. I'm going to do the exact same thing here. I'm going to delete media out. We're going to grab that setting. I'm going to drag it right back in here. We're going to reconnect everything. We're going to call that up on the right hand viewer. And there we go. We literally have this look called up in a matter of seconds. Okay, so let's move on. Now let's talk about what's going to happen when we're doing a similar type of thing when working with titles. Now, as we always do, let's head back and I'm just going to close the clips window. I'm going to come back to the edit module. I'm just going to reset that fusion composition. I'm going to reset this fusion composition as well, just so that everything is back to normal. Perfect. Let's bring this lower third that I've created for our next lesson when talking about working in 3D down over top of our clips. Okay. Now what makes this title interesting is the fact that I can only actually get in and make adjustments to it by heading into Fusion and I'd really rather not do that. What I would like to do is to take this title, save it as a preset inside of the effects library inside of our Fusion title section and make parameters editable over here in the inspector. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to head back into Fusion and you'll see that I have everything laid out. It looks fairly straightforward and it actually is and you're going to see how straightforward it is to create this in 3D in our next lesson. Okay, but what I want to do for right now is I want to take this lower third and export it so that only the parameters that I'd like the editor to see be visible in the inspector. What we're going to do is we're going to select all of the nodes except for the media out node. I'm now going to right click on one of them and what we're going to do is we're going to navigate down to macro and we're going to create a new macro. Now this might look very daunting when you look at it, but don't worry about it. I'm going to clear up what this actually is right now. Okay, the first thing we want to do is give our macro a name. So I'm going to call this 1-Kevin's Cool Title. Okay. Now the reason I called it number 1 is so that when we head back and we take a look at this title inside the effects window, it's actually going to appear at the top. Now I only want to get in and make a few parameters editable so that you can see them relatively easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get in and I'm going to use the low post and the Fusion Essentials node, which is basically our two text nodes, as the example of how we can set this up to make these parameters editable. Okay, so there's Fusion Essentials right there. I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to twirl up 3D. And what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to make styled text, font, and style something that can be edited as well as the color of the text itself. Now, the one thing that's important to keep in mind is that when setting this up for two titles, Right now, they're both going to be called the same thing inside the inspector. So what I like to do is where it says styled text, I'm going to call this because it is for the Fusion Essentials. I'm going to call this small styled text. OK, now I could call it small font, small style, small color, et cetera, et cetera. But we're just going to call it small styled text for right now. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to head back up to low post. I'm going to twirl that back up and do the exact same thing here. I'm going to call this large styled text. OK, and we're going to select the exact same parameters to make editable. OK, once I've done that, I'm now simply going to come down and close this out. It's going to ask me if I want to save this macro tool one. I'm going to say yes. And we're going to save it back to the desktop. Now you'll see that Fusion wants to save this out to a folder called Macros. Now we're not going to save it there. We're actually going to save it to the desktop. But you'll also notice that it wants to call it a dot setting file. So let's head to the desktop. OK, I'm going to call this Kevin's Cool Title 1. I'm simply going to say save. Doesn't appear as though anything has happened. Now, if I try to go back into Resolve's edit module and find this title, I'm not going to find it because I actually have to place it first. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hide out of Resolve. And what I've done is I've made a shortcut to a folder called Titles on my computer. Now, if I hold Command and I click on the actual Titles folder, you'll see that this is located in Library, Application Support, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, Templates, Edit, Titles. Now I'm going to give you the exact location that you're going to want to put this file on Windows right down here at the bottom of the screen. OK, so going into this titles folder, I'm simply going to take Kevin's cool title number one or one Kevin's cool title dot setting and I'm going to drop it in there. 
Now what's important for this process to work is that I actually have to refresh Resolve. So let's do that right now. I'm going to restart Resolve and when we come back in I'm going to show you the title and where you're going to be able to adjust those parameters. All right, so we are back and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this title all the way down to the end of the timeline so it disappears. We're going to head to the effects library and you'll now see under fusion titles there's that one Kevin's cool title. I'm simply going to take it, drag it and drop it down over top of my clip. You'll see there's the title appear just as we had it before. But most importantly, when I select it, you'll now see there's the parameters that I can now get in and adjust. So if I wanted to call this, instead of low post, we just wanted to call this Kevin P, you'll see that we can easily get in and adjust those parameters to whatever we want them to be. All right, so our lesson is done, but the conversation has only just begun. Keep in mind, in our next lesson, we're going to talk about 3D workflows inside of Fusion, how you can create this lower third that you see in front of you relatively quickly and relatively easily. So as always, I want to remind you that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or if you have suggestions for lessons that you'd like to see, I want you to head on over and post them in the forums at lowpost.com slash forums. And if you have any questions for me, you can always send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com.